Hello and welcome to SCPO Steel Gaming. My name is Sean O'Donnell, and I have discussed in the past personal favorite games on various systems. These ranged from NES, Super NES, PlayStation, Game Boy, what have you. And there, don't get me wrong, there's going to be more to come with those lists. But today, I thought I would go in the opposite direction. And that is discussing my top 10 least favorite games for the NES. Now, the NES, there's no secret that it's got a plethora of classic games. So many franchises got its start here, and a lot of the games on there influenced games going all the way up to today. But for this list, I am going to list 10 games for both the NES and the Famicom that, to me, I really don't like. They're just games I don't care for. Some of them, it's quality. Some of it, it's just didn't strike the right chord with me. And some of these games are considered classics. But, yeah, these are just 10 games that, for one reason or another, I don't like. So, here we go. Top 10 least favorite NES slash Famicom games. Let's jump right in. At number 10, we have A Boy and His Blob. Now, A Boy and His Blob is about a young man and his pet blob as they explore various caverns and stuff like that until they eventually travel to the blob's home world to try and rescue it. And I've never cared for this game. I've played it off and on a few Quite a few times over the years, I just... It's the kind of game that just doesn't resonate with me. It's... I don't mind the open world aspect. I think that was kind of innovative, if you will. The fact that you can use the jelly beans for various transformations of the blob to explore. Okay, that's fairly cool, I guess, but the game's just too eh. I've never liked it. And try and try as I might, I just I can't get into it. It's to me, it's just I don't know. I just, I can't come up with the words for it. It's just not for me. I guess it's the best way to put it. I don't mind adventure games with puzzle elements, stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. But this game just, I just don't think it's very good. At number nine, we have Fighting Golf. Now, normally on these kinds of lists, I try to keep sports titles out of the equation simply because I am not a big fan of the sports genre. However, there are certain exceptions to that rule. I like Wii Sports. I've always had fun with that. I don't mind the occasional golf game or even the arcade style basketball game. A game like NBA Jam is a, it's a great title. It's fun. But with fighting golf and somehow as a kid, I wound up with two copies of it. But with this title, I just feel it's misleading. You pick up a game like Fighting Golf, and 
the impression that one would have would be a golf game with perhaps some combat mechanics. Maybe something like Outlaw Golf, where, you know, you could hit the audience, get into a brawl with another golfer, something. But no, it's your basic golf game. And I don't understand why they put Fighting Golf as the title. That just... It, it doesn't make any sense. And yes, admittedly, even the cover, it looks like it's your basic golf game. But this game lies. This game lies to you. That, that, that's, that's why I'm putting it on here. It The game's a liar. And for anyone that knows me, there's two things I cannot, there's one thing I cannot stand. It's a liar slash hypocrite. And that is exactly what this game is. It is a dirty liar. At number eight, and this one recently featured in a ranking video, but it is Team Niche Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. So, it's no secret that, especially when compared to other consoles, that came out shortly after the NES or even during the time that the NES was not necessarily the most powerful console on the market. Seems to be a standard motif for a lot of Nintendo systems. So when the fighting game genre started to explode, the NES simply could not handle a fighting game one reason or another. And yes, there are bootleg fighting games out there that could potentially prove me wrong, but your main publishers could not get it to work on the NES. And this game is a perfect example of that. You have your various characters and the combat is sluggish. It's poorly done. To do special moves, you have to get a special item that you utilize. And just as a whole, this game doesn't work at all. It's a terrible fighting game. It's a terrible game, period. And... I know some people may look at for the nostalgia value, but this game just, it's, it's awful. It is simply awful. And in a weird way, the master system would have been able to handle this game. It probably would have been able to deliver a more quality experience than what the NES was able to put out. But, that's the subject of a different matter. Yeah, Tournament Fighters. Just straight trash as far as I'm concerned. At number seven, we have Ninja Gaiden 3, The Ancient Ship of Doom. And this game's on the list for a few reasons. One of the original trilogy, it's the least memorable. It takes place between the events of 1 and 2, and quite frankly, the story's just not that interesting. It starts off with potential, don't get me wrong. Irene is apparently murdered, and Ryu is to blame. But given that this comes out between 1 and 2, and it's kind of mentioned a lot either on the box I don't it kind of defeats that mystery aspect then you have the fact that Nintendo asked 
Tecmo to alter the game to make it less accessible, I guess you will, because they were trying to get people more to buy over rent. This was a shady tactic that they pulled a number of times on the system. And so what they did was they simply added more enemies and eliminated the infinite continues. Shortened the time and stages, just made the game a broken mess. And that's a shame because if they had not tampered with it, it would have been the weakest of the trilogy. It still is, but it at least would have felt better quality wise. But the tampering that was done to it just, it really hurts the experience. And like I said, the experience isn't even that great to begin with. The bosses aren't memorable. The power ups are, eh. I'm sorry, but extending your sword reach is a poor substitute for the Shadow Devils from number two. Overall, this game's just... It goes out with a whimper. At number six, and we are going with yet again another third entry of a franchise, but it is Double Dragon 3, the Rosetta Stone. So Double Dragon 3 is a port of the arcade game, and it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. It feels broken. The enemies are way too powerful. You can't really do much. I mean, you have a you have a fairly wide range of attacks, but just it doesn't feel that way. With most games of this type, you should at least be able to get through the first couple stages with little problem. You know, kind of get your feet wet. And this one, you're lucky if you can get out of the first area without losing all your lives. It's it's just such stupid bullshit. And I've played it a few times. I've gotten a decent way through, but it's just such a bad game. And honestly, I'm surprised it didn't kill the franchise. It's that bad. At number five, we have The Adventures of Bayou Billy. And this game's on the list because, once again, Nintendo had Konami tamper with it. This game is a port of Mad City over in Japan. But with this version, they up the difficulty... So the enemies take two to three times the number of hits to kill. They, I mean, that was, that was kind of the big thing. They just, they messed with the game and made it unplayable. And this is once again because Nintendo was trying to drive sales over rentals. But... This game is unique in a lot of ways. Like, it's got multiple game modes. You have a side-scroller brawler stages. You have driving stages. You have shooter stages that you can use with the light gun, the zapper. But because it's all broken, it's no fun. And I've played the Japanese version. And... It's just, it's a much smoother, more enjoyable experience. This one is just such a hot mess that I wouldn't recommend it.
At number four, we have Conan the Barbarian. And... <sighs> oh. Oh. This one is terrible. So you're put into the role of Conan. And... Yeah, you're just on this adventure. I don't even know if this is supposed to be like an adaptation of the movie or not, to be honest. I've played it a few times. And it's just terrible. The controls are awful, which is crazy to say because you're talking about an NES game. You're talking about essentially a three-button layout. And the controls suck. Conan is sluggish. The attacks don't do anything. The stage layout's just crap. All around, this is just an awful, awful, awful game. And in a lot of ways, I kind of wish I didn't know about it, but I do. And it's just how this got released, I don't know. At number three, we have Super Mario Brothers, The Lost Levels, or Super Mario Brothers 2 Japan. And <clears throat> this is just more of the same of Super Mario Brothers. It's simply the best way to put it. But this game almost feels like a cruel joke. So the stages are much more difficult. You have power-ups that hurt you over help. You have warp pipes that take you back earlier into the game. It's just... This game just feels like Nintendo trolling the players. And... Yes, the game adds a few things. But... Oh. It's just, I kind of feel like this is the genesis of what they call Kaizo levels. It's just ridiculously difficult, stupid, and unenjoyable. And I'm sure, I know this game has its fans. I know there are people that love playing this one. But... Nintendo was very wise, or at least Nintendo of America, was very wise to not release this one to the States and instead brought us the Super Mario Brothers 2 that we got. Because had this one come out, I really don't think Mario would be the, the figurehead that he is today. I don't know who would be, but... This would have been a critical misstep for the character. At number two, we have Final Fantasy. So Final Fantasy is, of course, the first entry in the long-running RPG series. The story is simple. You have four Warriors of Light, who you customize at the beginning of the game... And you basically have to go through and relight the crystal, the elemental crystals, and stop the forces of darkness. Simple concept. But... This game... I don't feel is greatly made especially when compared to its contemporary in Dragon Quest or Dragon Warrior. So there's 
a lot to unpack here. A fleshed out story is not a deal breaker, especially in the NES RPG days. I mean, hell, the original Dragon Warrior, its story was as bare bones as it gets. In fact, if you look through most of the Dragon Quest games, your main hero usually doesn't have a lot of character development. Side characters do. Main character, maybe not so much. Of course, there are some exceptions. But... <sighs> There's just a lot in this game that I don't feel worked out well. For example, the magic system. Rather than, say, magic points, you have X number of uses per spell before you can't use it again. You have to go heal up. That's a little annoying. When you're at shops and you're going to buy weapons, stuff like that, you have no idea who can equip what. So, you might buy something that sounds useful, go to equip it on a character, and you can't. Don't know you waste that money. The game's difficulty... Okay, RPGs on the NES were not balanced. We're not the best balanced. This it, it applies to Dragon Quest... Nothing to really gripe about there. That's just how it was. But where this game differentiates from that is this game is really easy to get overwhelmed. You could go into a random battle and suddenly you'll have like nine different enemies up against you and quickly wipe you out if you're not careful. This game's just... Like I said, I just... I don't feel it's a very well-made game. And... I played through it. Or at least a decent way... Decent way through it. And... Subsequent ports of it re-releases, re remakes, what have you, fix a lot of the problems that this original entry has. But on its own merit, I cannot, I don't like this particular port. I can't really recommend it. It's... It's incredibly rough around the edges, and it just, it, it shows. At number one, and this one, ooh. This game is awful. And... It's Transformers Mystery of Convoy. So, this game is an adaptation of, I guess, a short that was released in Japan that was meant to tie in the second season to the events of the movie in Japan because the Transformers movie got released much later in Japan than it did in the States. So there was a lot of questions as to who are these new characters and what happened to Optimus Prime, a.k.a. Convoy, what have you. And this game was meant to tie in with that. Wow, you want to talk about a trash game. So you take the role of Ultra Magnus, and 
you go through various stages until you fight the boss. And these bosses can range from some of the characters from the series, like Trypticon. But a lot of times you'll just fight the damn Decepticon logo. Now you can transform between robot mode and vehicle mode. But it's one hit kills. And it's not like, say, Contra, where if you die, you just start right back where you're at. No, you go back to the beginning of the stage. And it's really easy to die and not know why. Like an enemy projectile, you may not even see, and then you're hit and you're dead. <laughs> the music's annoying. This is just... It's just one of those games that you're just like, wow, what the fuck? And the NES should have gotten a good Transformers game. But instead, at least in Japan with the Famicom, they got this. Now, you can get bootleg copies of this here in the States. Why you would want to, I don't know. But, oh, <laughs> it's just a terrible game from beginning to end. It's a terrible game. And It may not necessarily be the worst game on the NES, but at least as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it pretty much is. So that is my top 10 least favorite NES slash Famicom games. Was there any games on here you were surprised by? Let me know in the comments below. What are some NES games that you just, you do not like that are just, as far as you're concerned, they're just not good games. Once again, let me know in the comments below. Some of these games I know have their fans. And some of these games can be considered quality titles. But like I said, these are games that I just feel are, are just bad. Beginning to end, they're just bad. And I just, I can't, I, I can't recommend these games. They're just, to me, they're intolerable. So, anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.